In this episode, we're going to be making an anchor snubber. So we're going to be splicing this chain hook directly onto the snubber line itself using a rope to chain splice. It's a very strong splice that's very simple and holds very well. Now you have to keep an eye on it for chafe because this very smooth area in here over time can go chafing and when it gets chafed then you have to replace the splice. But in the meantime it's a very secure way to attach the chain hook to the snubber to give you the needed elasticity in an all chain road. So the materials you're going to need are a cutting board, tape measure, knife, and a Rubik's cube, and some line that you're going to be using to tie certain areas off. So the first step, you need to measure out two feet, so 24 inches. So that means that we're looking at this area here. So this guy right here is going to be our splice point. So when you're calculating how much line you need for your snubber, you're going to need two feet extra for the splice. Now I'm just going to tie a double constrictor knot here, not too tightly, but enough to be very secure. Now the purpose of the double constrictor knot is twofold. One, it marks it very obviously where the splice is going to occur. And the second thing, it keeps all the lines intact. So we're going to unlay the three lays and the issue is this is brand new line so as you can see the end kind of comes unraveled a bit so while i'm unlaying it i'm just literally unlaying it you pick it up and you move it over so you don't want to work it too hard or anything because it'll start to unravel like you can see at the very end here okay now that we have the line completely unlaid all the way back to this point we're going to take the chain hook and we're actually going to slide it on to only two lines. The third one stays out. I'm just gonna slide these all the way down until we get to the constrictor knot. So now we're gonna name these lines. So. This is going to be the first, the second, and the third. The first is the one that is not going through the chain hook. The second goes through the chain hook, and the third goes through the chain hook. So now that we're at this point, we're actually going to untie the double constrictor knot. And this is why I tied it loosely. So I do a double constrictor knot because it holds better than a single constrictor knot, which means that I don't have to tighten it down as much to have it hold the same amount. And if you don't tighten a constrictor knot as much, you can then untie them because a double constrictor knot is actually a permanent knot if you tighten it all the way. Which is why you don't want to tighten it all the way because <laughs> you won't untie it. Okay, so now we're going to come around. We're removing the first strand from the constrictor knot. The next step is going to look a lot like a long splice. So what we're going to do is we're going to be unlaying the first strand while laying in the second strand. So we're going to pass over it and it's going to come in here. Now this is just like doing a long splice. So the first strand comes out, second strand goes in. Now this is brand new rope, which means it loves to come unlaid. So if this is your first time working with it, don't be surprised if the, uh, the one that you're laying back to replace the first strand, the second strand in this case, uh, starts to kind of balloon up. It's, it happens. As you use it, it'll go behaving a little better and it'll, it'll go blending in. So we're going to lay this back in the full two feet. Now with practice, you can keep it looking good and just fitting in there. But if you're struggling here and it keeps kind of opening up on you, you can use hairspray. It's a great material to stiffen up the line and make it behave better. But as you can see, you don't have to use hairspray. You can do it without.
Okay, now that we're down near the end, we're just gonna look, we wanna have enough line to do between five to seven tucks here. So, we're actually gonna take it back some. So now I'm going to unlay the line I just put in and I'm going to relay the first line. So that's why it's very important that you don't just go willy nilly and kind of tear up the line as you go because you might need to put it back. Okay, so at this point, this is the first strand and this is the second strand and our third strand is still over here. We haven't gotten to that guy yet. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to finish these two off and then bury their tails. So just do a nice little overhand knot and then we're just gonna bury this knotted section just down into the lays, just to kind of make them disappear a little bit. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the tail and we're going to tuck it in. Okay, so here we've got five tucks on this one. Now we're going to tuck the other side. Okay, so now at this point, we're just going to cut the line off. The same on the other side. Now at this point we have the splice done here. It looks a little knobby, so we're just going to work it with our hands to kind of bring everything into place. Also got to clean up these kind of rough fluffy ends here. But you don't want to burn them off, so burning them will actually create really hard spots, which can then actually chafe on the line itself and cause premature failure of the line. So you always want to keep your ends nice and soft and fluffy, you don't want to go melting them. Now one of the pluses of this kind of splice is that you can actually run it if you're attached to chain through a windlass. So if your windlass has a rope and chain gypsy, having a rope to chain splice will allow the rope to feed through, the splice to feed through, and then ultimately transition the chain. Okay, so lastly, we have this strand here that's just hanging out. So this is the third strand. So remember, the first strand wasn't involved in the chain hook. The second strand came through the chain hook and then replaced the lay groove from the first strand. So as you remove the first strand, you lay the second strand in. They're connected over here, so they're done. Now this one's the last one. So what we're going to do is actually just bring it back and tuck it in like a regular splice. So we're just going to open here and begin feeding it through. So all you do is you pretty much tie a half hitch with the last strand. So it comes through, it goes in, and then it goes back under itself. So it slips back through there. And this is a good time to take off your constrictor knot because if you don't now, it's gonna be really hard to do it later. All right, so that one's off. So now we're just gonna tighten this up and that'll set everything into position. So that's one tuck and we're just gonna do between five to seven tucks on this one. Okay, now that we have all those tucks in, we're just gonna cut it off again. And a trick to make the, the fluffy part kind of hide a little better, I pull it back and then cut it off and then work it over again. And then it kind of hides it a little better. Okay, and now all these kind of lumpy parts, we just work them out and kind of just smooth the line up so that way it's a lot less lumpy. And when it gets loaded, the line will then really straighten out and come into its own right. And there you have a very sturdy rope to chain splice onto a chain hook, making it very quick and easy to attach your snubber to your chain when you're anchoring in a hurry. And more importantly, when you're leaving your anchorage, you can quickly get it off and then keep getting your anchor rode in. You don't have to stop and untie something like a rolling hitch or a magnus hitch. It's just disconnect the chain and off you go. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, 
and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.